Good morning, I'm Jennifer Polentan reporting for Eagle News International and today we're going to be broadcasting from our studios here in New York to give you the, the news from all over the world and around our nation. First up, we'll be discussing our world leaders and President-elect Donald Trump. Japanese Prime Minister Abe is set to be the first foreign leader to meet with Trump since his election, last November 8th. The real estate mogul is set to meet with Shinzo Abe to discuss the two-way alliance and the core of Tokyo's diplomacy and security. Trump's aide, Kellyanne Conway, has spoken and said that Trump is still working out the details to press access because the meeting should not take place over at the White House because Democratic President Barack Obama is there until January 20th. Details about the meeting remain unclear and with Trump's transition team not responding to requests for comment. An advisor to Trump, who has spoken anonymously because he has not been authorized to speak to the media, said that earlier this week, Trump would assure Abe and other Asian allies rattled by his campaign rhetoric. Trump, who is a Republican, has fanned worries in Tokyo and beyond because of his comments on the possibility of Japan acquiring nuclear arms and demands that allies pay for more for the upkeep of Japanese defense. On the campaign trail, Trump has described the United States' relationship with Japan as unfair. As one president prepares to take office next year, our current president, Barack Obama, has now prepared for his farewell tour around the European nations. U.S. President Barack Obama went for a short walk around Berlin's historic landmark in Bradenburg Gate on Thursday before his meetings with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Obama is visiting the German capital for two nights as part of his farewell European tour. He is scheduled to meet with Merkel and then with the leaders of France, Spain, Italy, and the United Kingdom. On his last overseas trip, before successor Donald Trump takes office in January, Obama is seeking to reassure European allies who are concerned about the implications of a Trump presidency. Trump has garnered support because of his promises to build a wall on the United States border with Mexico, ban Muslims from temporarily working in the United States, and to rip up trade deals that he said had hurt American workers. Obama has opposed these positions and is now fighting to keep his legacy of accomplishments on health care, climate change, and nuclear diplomacy alive in the face of Trump's promises to dismantle them. In other news from around the world, Philippine President Duterte is speaking with Russian President to perhaps leave the ICC or the International Criminal Court. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte said he might follow and withdraw from the International Criminal Court, citing criticism from Western nations for a rash of killings unleashed by his war on drugs. Duterte has described the ICC as useless and expressed frustration about West's allegations of extrajudicial killings and its failure to understand his crackdown on narcotics. He has also appeared to blame the United Nations for failing to prevent wars all over the world. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed an executive order removing Russia's signature from the founding treaty of the ICC on Wednesday, and Duterte said he might consider doing the same. Duterte is seeking a meeting with Putin in Lima this weekend, which comes as he pursues an independent foreign policy aimed at weaning the Philippines off dependence on longtime ally United States. He has frequently praised Russia and China. Duterte has speculated that the ICC's move might be because of its airstrikes in Syria. Russia is under international pressure over the Syria airstrikes, with some human rights activists and U.S. officials accusing it of bombing civilians and civilian targets. Russia has denied those allegations. The International Criminal Court, which the Philippines had became a member of in 2011, has received an ear-bashing from the outspoken Philippine leader. Like all those who have shown concern about his war on drugs and the more than 2,400 people killed. 
an ICC prosecutor last month said the Hague-based tribunal may have jurisdiction to prosecute the perpetrator of the killings. Duterte has then said that he was annoyed with the criticism that he had received and that no one was listening to his reasons for having the crackdown, including U.S. President Barack Obama. He then took aim at United States foreign policy and the United Nations and said he would be happier if China and Russia called the shots. Stay tuned for more. We'll be back. Welcome back. Today, we are broadcasting from our studios here in New York, and we are honored to give you the news of what's happening around our city. Since Trump has taken office, there has been many protesters, and we have one of reporters on the field to give us an update. Abigail Mayel is here to give you the news. Hundreds of Columbia University and Rutgers University school students walked out of classes in New York City and New Jersey on Wednesday, November 16, to demand that their schools be made a sanctuary campus after the surprise presidential election victory of Republican Donald Trump in the second week of demonstrations around the United States. So I'm here to demand that President Bollinger of Columbia University make my school, our school, a sanctuary campus. and. Um, also protect the financial aid of undocumented students on this campus and their ability to work on campus. Undocumented students to fight the intolerance and the respect for one another. The sanctuary's movement has been embraced in nearly 40 U.S. cities, where local police have made it a policy to refrain from checking the immigration status of individuals under arrest and sharing that information with federal authorities who could act to deport them. The movement came to greater national attention under the Democratic administration of President Barack Obama, who was criticized by Republicans for tolerating sanctuaries, even as his administration moved to step up deportations of immigrants with criminal records. It has taken on a new sense of urgency after Trump, a Republican, promised during his campaign to expand deportations and to withhold federal funds from cities that shield people in the country illegally. In a nationally televised interview Sunday, Trump said he would immediately deport or incarcerate 2 million to 3 million illegal immigrants who he said are convicted criminals, street gang members, or drug dealers. By comparison, roughly 2 million people have been deported during Obama's eight years in office. Reporting for Eagle News, EBC Bureau of New York, this is Abby Mayo, and I am one with 25. Thank you, Abby. And because of all the protesters, there has been heightened security due to Trump and the protesters around the city. This has scared off some potential shoppers and visitors to Manhattan. Now we have Joanne Blanco to give us the update. This is Joanne Blanco reporting from the New York Bureau of Eagle News. I am here at Trump Tower where tight security in the area may be scaring off shoppers. Since the election of Donald Trump for U.S. President, heightened security in the area has been causing heavy traffic and headaches for commuters, for shoppers, and for people who live and work in the area. The New York Police Department has set up metal and concrete barricades in front of Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue and has closed one of the streets near the building to pedestrian and vehicular traffic. As heavily armed police officers stand guard outside Trump Tower, some neighboring luxury stores have complained that the added security is hampering their business. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio addressed the concerns during a news conference on Wednesday, November 16th. I will not tell you that Gucci and Tiffany are my central concerns in life. But uh, 
But I will say the traffic situation is a very real problem. And it's magnified, of course, because we're going into the holidays. Obviously, traffic in Midtown has to flow, and obviously the president-elect and his entire team have to be protected. The level of security came as a surprise to some passerby as they maneuvered around barricades and through security checkpoints. It's going to definitely get worse once the holidays approach and there'll be even more traffic, but it's something we, we're used to. You know, it's something that we have to deal with snow and traffic and some of the uh, exciting things that happen in New York. While the mayor offered little sympathy for the plight of luxury retailers, smaller businesses in the area are also being adversely affected. Dominique Amato, the general manager of Obika, a cafe located in the atrium behind Trump Tower, said his business began losing customers the day after the election. Especially Wednesday and Thursday, they were searching everybody that came into the area. Uh, Trump Tower was completely closed to the public. And we get a lot of our tourists that way. They come through Trump Tower, they want to see what's past the doors, and they find us. Um, so with all the security that's been beefed up, you know, a lot of people are staying away. Down 20%, down 20% across the board, which is not good. <laughs> City officials said they expect heavy security around Trump Tower at least through January. Reporting from the New York Bureau, my name is Joanne Blanco and I am one with 25. Welcome back. Again, we're broadcasting from our studios here in New York. And the question remains, is everything that we see online true? We have Abigail Maya to give us the story and the details on fake news on social media. The web has made it increasingly easy for sites built overnight to find massive audiences with little or no effort. This is true for not only classic viral sites like Upworthy and BuzzFeed, but also for sites trafficking in completely fake news. The social networks play a major role in how fast fake news spreads. Many Americans, 62% to be exact, get some news from social media. But there's also significant pressure on publishers themselves. Today, publishers are more incentivized to publish quickly than they are to get things right. After all, you can't give a click back once you've gotten it. Today, Twitter, Facebook, and Google are taking steps to reduce fake news, misinformation, and harassment on the internet after users express concerns that false news stories and hate speech fueled divisiveness in the recent presidential election campaign. This has been Abby Mayo for EBC New York, and I am one with 25. When? as heightened security and perhaps some protesters around New York might scare off some potential tourists, Delta has now introduced a new class for the Frugal Flyer. We have Abigail Mayo to give us more details. Delta Airlines just announced a brand new class for the Frugal Business Flyer. Delta Premium is a mix between economy and business class. Amenities include a larger 19-inch seat, 6 inches of extra legroom, in-seat charging ports. Special amenities include noise-canceling headphones, faster check-in, security lines, and bag returns and earlier boarding. Earlier this week, United Airlines also announced the introduction of its new basic economy service, designed to take on the growing competition from low-cost carriers. This has been Abby Mayo for EBC New York, and I am one with 25. And now we move over into arts and entertainment news. 
everyone knows that rock and roll goes together, but just how much do they have in common? We have news correspondent Tenny Samagi to give us the details. Attention all Rolling Stones fans! Wish to rock and roll through five decades of history and memorabilia? From now until March 12, fans can wander through Exhibitionism, the band's travel exhibit in New York City's Meatpacking District. The exhibit consists of nine galleries filled with a collection of the band's costumes, musical instruments, and personal notes for fans to view and enjoy. For its band members Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Ronnie Woods, and Charlie Watts, sharing memorabilia created a sense of nostalgia not only for fans, but for the band themselves. Keith Richards quotes, I think I walked away from it with how much the songs means to so many people. And that was kind of humbling in a way. I mean, I'm not particularly sentimental, but it's a very touching thing to me. The band is prepared to release their first album in 10 years, paying homage to their blues heroes from their teenage years. The album's release date is set for December 2. For more information on Exhibitionism, visit stonesexhibitionism.com for more details. Moving our attention from rock and roll to The Rock. Add Sexiest Man Alive to Dwayne The Rock Johnson's list of credentials. On Tuesday, Johnson was named People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive. This issue is out on newsstands this Friday. The 44-year-old former WWE wrestler turned Hollywood actor and producer made an appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, expressing how awesome it was to be honored as the sexiest man alive. Thank you so much. That was so good. Well, I'm listen, scared. You, your hard work has paid off. I'm here to announce. The actor and father of two daughters will be featured in the upcoming Disney animated film Moana as the voice of demigod Maui. He also expresses interest in entering the political ring and running for office. That's it for pop culture news. I'm EBC correspondent Tenny Samagi, and I am one with 25. And that's our news program from today. I'm Jennifer Paulantan for Eagle News International, broadcasting from the studios in New York to give you the news around the nation and around the world. And we are one with 25.